I'm happy to be a doctor. Sometimes they even think I'm better than their doctors. Some parents can give problems, but not because I'm black. You get good pay, you get some benefits. The study system in Italy is quite straightforward and also it's very affordable. In the public, no one looks at your skin color. Hello, lovely family. I welcome you again to Rofeka Live. That is Share with Rofeka. You won't get this particular channel anywhere. There are a lot of things that we are learning on this particular platform. So if you are new here, I entreat you to subscribe first so that you won't miss any video that we share or we post on this channel. So I have a very um, vibrant doctor with me who has um, more experience to share her doctoral courses and other particular things in Europe, precisely in Italy here. Our dear doctor, welcome to share with Rofeka. You will tell us um, your name, and then a bit about your background. Thank you for having me. So my name is Maura and I'm 28 years old. I've been in Italy since 2007 and I was born in Nigeria. So I was born into a large family. I have uh, several stepbrothers and sisters and my parents together, they had seven children of which I'm the se um, second to last. So I have five sisters and one brother. So I grew up in uh, Nigeria to the age of 13 and then with my youngest sister I came to Italy to join my mother because my parents are separated since we were um, seven, six and uh, four and six, six more or less. So um, when I arrived in Italy my mom was um, married to an Italian person so uh, we started learning Italian immediately and we started school immediately. Before coming to Italy, I had an idea of what I wanted to do with my life. So at first I wanted to study engineering and then I decided to become a medical doctor because my father wanted a medical doctor. And uh, with time I grew to love this um, decision. I had passion for children and to take care of children. So. I decided I was going to be a children's doctor and so um, my path in Italy uh, was all based on my final focus to become a doctor so I started in uh, the second year of um, junior secondary school I had to lose a year because um, I had to find the time to learn the language so I was uh, the oldest in my class by one year after which uh, I applied for Liceo Scientifico, which is a scientific high school, because yes. here you have different paths. So if you want to go to the university, you mostly go to the Liceo. If you want to work uh, uh, industrial work, maybe you go to ETIS and so on. So I chose the Liceo. And um, it was five long years in which I spent a lot of time studying. So I studied a lot during the Liceo period because I was also uh, trying to meet up with my um, with the language so uh, maybe I had a lot of problem with the Italian language and also I had to study Latin and there were scientific subjects because in Nigeria I didn't have the time to for example do some subjects since I left early and in Italy uh, they, they did some subjects early so I didn't really um, study some stuff so I had to learn on my some things on my own like okay. in geography or maybe um, well, for example but yeah. luckily for me when I was in Nigeria I went to a really good school which uh, prepared, prepared us uh, for uh, the future also in a, in, a, in a foreign country, especially in Europe. So in my school, uh, we, we were always um, taught uh, to behave like uh, Europeans yeah. like with the mindset of going to live in Europe one day. Okay. So uh, when I got to Italy, I had the advantage of having uh, my Nigerian education and I just like uh, implemented it with the Italian education but I think to having studied in, in Nigeria was a big part of my academical success like the way it um, straightened me and put me in the mindset of um, studying to achieve something or mindset of going to the university eventually something which you don't have in Italy the children don't grow up with the mindset of going to the university so um, I did my five years of Liceo and then I wrote the exam to uh, study medicine 
and um, then I started after the exam um, I started medicine which is uh, six years and that is also a lot of studying sometimes 10 hours a day wow. and uh, after that I graduated <laughs> So, wow. but wow. everything is uh, just study, study, study. So. Yes, yes, everything is like study. But have you um, always wanted to be a doctor? I know, like I said, um, I wanted to be an engineer, engineer when I was age of 10, 11, yes. because I like uh, putting things together and creating things with my hands. Yeah. So uh, one day, a few months before traveling, yes. my sisters were like talking about how my father wanted to have a doctor and then I... Like, in the okay. family? Yeah, so <laughs> I said, uh, maybe I can become a doctor. I love children, so maybe I can become a children's doctor. Yes. And that's how I just uh, maintained this idea of becoming a doctor. Oh wow, so you, um, when your father said that, um, you also accepted because you felt like um, you can be a doctor or something uh, I felt I, can, I could become anything I wanted, so... It was just a question of what I really wanted and at that time I, I was in, I was 12 years old so I just said okay I want to be a doctor for my father but with time it became something I wanted mostly for me. Yeah. But it all started from the idea of becoming a doctor to please my father. Medical studies is really really difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. So how did you like empower yourself to take this now you're a professional medical doctor? Okay, so um, I practice what I call self-discipline. So I tell myself I have to study 10 hours a day and I calculate my time, my lecture, sleep time, eating time to make sure I can study 10 hours a day. And I did that for most of my university life and I think that is basically it. Like you have to find out what you need to reach where you need to go to and then impose it on yourself and that's all wow wow i really like the way that you made mention that self-discipline self-discipline very very if you can discipline yourself very well um believe me there is nothing that you can do there is nothing that you can do. so what even motivated you what well, motivated you to become a professional doctor i, mean, I right from a, uh, from when i was a child i loved reading and i like discovering things I love knowledge so it, that was the easy part let's say like I really enjoy understanding things and uh, medicine has a lot of new interesting stuff about apart from the human body um, science uh, chemistry so for me it was really interesting to make these discoveries and, and having to uh, write exams um, these challenges were what pushed me forward like knowing that I was able to study understand is something that motivates me like I love knowledge so love knowledge. that uh, was my main motivation let's wow. say okay okay you see um, sometimes um, people like for instance um, they dream to become a doctor or any professional work but on the way going you see that they have some doubting mind so did you doubt yourself to pursue this um particular professional way let's say um, the first year of medicine wasn't easy i had to write one exam my chemistry exam i had to write it eight times and in that period of time i i wasn't so encouraged like i felt i was never going to pass that exam so maybe just that period but once i passed that exam i had a pretty smooth um, course from there onwards so I was um, I, I had uh, less difficulties like sometimes I would feel like I I wasn't intelligent enough or mm -hmm. I didn't have enough memory but uh, I believed I was made to do to reach my goal like I didn't feel like I wasn't good enough to become a doctor but maybe I wasn't good enough to become a doctor with the Italian system because I've, it was frustrating for me to know that I have the potential and uh, I I couldn't go um, I couldn't uh, reach my goal, reach goal because yeah. of that exam. But once I managed to pass that exam and then study other stuff and make new discoveries, I keep up with the pace. I was uh, I didn't really have doubts after afterwards here in italy there are a lot of races i don't know mm -hmm. if you've passed research process personally i don't 
think I did. Like okay. I spend a lot of time alone. I don't really. I have few friends. Most of my friends are Italian, and so I I don't really uh, have the opportunity. I, I haven't really had the, the experiences. Like I don't go. I did, I've never been to a ninth club, so I don't know if if I had gone, maybe someone would have treated me badly. So I can't really say I have been a victim of racism. Or even if I had, I I haven't really given it any importance because it has never really had any importance in my my in my life so for, for now so i can say for now no okay. especially in my uh, course of study like the professors would ask me questions based on my, the color of my skin but i think it's uh, normal like if you see someone from uh, japan or someone from country, myanmar yeah. you are curious to know more about them about not them, because yes. um, you think they are not up to the, the task so I've never felt like someone treated me like I wasn't up to the task okay. because of my origins. Yeah, like I said, we have um, a doctor, Maura. She has availed herself to um, educators on most particularly how you can achieve professional work. We have this mentality that um, people that go to school here in Italy, um, they end up, they are failed. So she is telling us that Education is very important here in Europe or Italy and she is narrating how she passed through before being a professional doctor like this. Studying becomes um, very tough at times. So how did you even balance your studies and your personal life? Okay, how was so it like? Well, it's not easy. Like I basically didn't have a personal life. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, while I was in um, <coughs> the Liceo, I I had some time for sports and uh, I went to the parochia, the church, I, th that was my personal life, let's say. So when I wasn't um, doing homework or studying, I was uh, spending some time with my church friends. And when I started the university, I didn't have any time for anything else. So I spent most of my time studying and when I got tired of studying, I would go maybe for a run, but I didn't really do much apart from um, staying at home and studying or maybe during the summer, some holidays, but most of the time was just dedicated to my books. So as a, a, a professional medical doctor, um, I, I believe you, you prescribe drugs, medicine for patients. So how is it like the white comes to you? So since I graduated, I started working immediately as a doctor. On, I, I, we say Guardia Medica in Italy, which is a doctor that works mainly during the night from 8 to 8 and uh, in, uh, during the day, weekends or uh, festive periods. So um, as a doctor uh, that does Guardia Medica, I, I am the owner of the surgery let's say so i decide the therapy i decide what i want to do how i want to treat the patients and the patients have to follow my instructions if not they stay sick so uh, no one tells me what to do i i am in charge when i'm at work as a you know, doctor of the guardia medica yeah. and in that case uh, most of the patients uh, really uh, appreciate me like Sometimes they will ask me where I work and they would want to become my patients. Like okay. They will ask me if I'm a family doctor because I think they feel I'm competent, which I okay. think I am. And yes. um, sometimes they even think I'm better than their doctors. Oh, so, really? Yes, because I, I'm quite confident when I do my job. Okay. And when I don't know something, I tell them clearly. We find solutions together, but most of the time I give them solutions to their problems and no one really sees, the, complained. No one sees the skin color when it comes to health okay. so that is something important yeah when i'm in the hospital uh, because i'm in my residency so i'm working to become a pediatrician uh, yeah. children's doctor yeah. in the hospital i have uh, my attendings who uh, make the big decisions but also uh, in that context the patients which are the, uh, the children they don't see color children don't see color so i've never had any problem with children and uh, some parents are, um, can give problems but not because I'm black but because they are worried or they want uh, something for their child even though uh, as a doctor I wouldn't recommend that and so maybe it's more difficult there because I'm not the one in charge but um, 
I've never really had any problems due to my skin color, neither in the hospital or when I'm working uh, on my own as an independent doctor. In Italy, we do a lot of theory, so we spend a lot of time on the books. Okay. In other countries, they do less theory, like they do a lot of practice. So yeah. uh, abroad, people are better with uh, the practical, Practicals. while in Italy, we are better with the knowledge. So okay. the theoretical, like I can give you, I can tell you a lot about a disease, but I couldn't treat that kind of disease, for example. Okay. So uh, if someone ha is more um, capable uh, practically, it's better to go abroad, like uh, to other countries. To other countries. Like for when I was studying, I really, uh, I spent a lot of time abroad as well, like exchange programs, because I wanted to do more practice. So um, the problem, so for me, uh, who wants to study in Italy, it's, uh, it's good, like, the process is quite straightforward, but I would encourage one to also um, try and um, go abroad, like exchange programs, uh, especially in the medical field, to try and get a lot of practice as much as possible, which is in the medical field is uh, really difficult. In Italy, you spend a lot of time studying, studying. diseases that maybe you wouldn't see in your everyday yeah, but life. But you still study it. Yeah, but I still studied there, yeah, but I also spent a lot of time abroad. Like I went okay. to other country. another country during my studies. Countries such like? I went to Greece. Okay. And then I went to Myanmar, which is in Asia. Yeah. And for practice, okay. for practical studies, okay. while still studying medicine. Because okay. the universities give the opportunity to do these exchange programs. Oh, okay. Studying in Europe, in Africa, how was it like? From my experience in Africa is um, of the primary and sec junior secondary oh, okay, school. Yes. So from what I saw, I think uh, in Africa they focus more on the discipline. So uh, the children are more disciplined and they, they, they are studying for, for a reason, which is to go to the university. We are in Italy. Uh, the students study because they have to study. Like they know they have to go to school, and then when they turn 16, they decide if they want to continue studying or not. While in Nigeria, when you turn 16, you are either finishing secondary school or starting university. It's it, no one no one goes to school to not go to the university. So the fact that you are going to the university um, puts you in the position that you have to study to reach the final goal. Why in Italy most uh, students study because they have to, because it's uh, obligatory till the age of 16 and then once they are 16, the, those who aren't interested just stop studying. And uh, this, um, you would, this uh, influences a lot the, the way the, the students are taught and uh, the way they study. Like in Nigeria, uh, you have one school for all the various um, subjects. Like if you want to go into arts, it's the same school, you just change your class. If you want to go into science, it's the same school, you just change. go to another group. Here in Italy, they tend to uh, divide the students. So if you want to study science, you go to Liceo Scientifico. If you want to study arts, you go to Liceo Classico. If you want to become uh, a designer, you go to uh, Ipsia. So this is another big difference, which uh, it's not good in my opinion, because then it, put, it creates uh, groups of people and then the, those from the Liceo will say, ah, you are in Ipsia, you are less intelligent than me. Uh -huh. So why in, uh, in Nigeria, where uh, everyone at the end are in the same school, maybe they spend the break together, yeah. just like everyone is just studying something different, but they, are all, uh, they, all, they all belong. Having studied in Nigeria for the first years of my life was very important to mm. achieving my goal today. But I wouldn't say to take your children to Nigeria, of course, but maybe bring in some of the discipline uh, we, we have there, like uh, get, take the good from both cultures. And then one thing I want to know before um, bringing our conversation or what you are sharing down, how difficult was it for you to become a professional doctor in Europe or Italy? It requires a lot of sacrifice. So for me, it was more of pleasure like i said i enjoy studying so yeah. uh, as far as what i'm doing is giving me uh, the results i want i I'm, I'm happy to do it so 
the difficult aspect is the fact that I had to sacrifice my social life but then again uh, for me it wasn't um, the most important aspect for me for me it was uh, reaching my goal uh, and I reached my goal in the time I wanted like I graduated when by the age of 26 I started working immediately so um, if I consider that aspect it wasn't difficult if I consider the fact that I, I didn't spend a lot of time with my friends or that I don't have a lot of friends or I didn't live some experience that you normally live during the youth age then I would say it was very difficult so it depends on the point of view okay okay and are you much happy of the career decision that you took to be a doctor i'm happy about my decision and um, i would i i don't know if in the future i would want to become a doctor again because as a doctor you get to see a lot of uh, things and yeah. um, sometimes the job is uh, tiring and uh, sometimes it's not rewarding so if i think about uh, now and uh, the sacrifice I put into the job, if not that I have uh, the passion for this job, I don't, I don't think I would do it again. Like, if one wants to become a doctor for um, economical reasons, then it's not the right job here in Italy. Like, it, it's a job you have to do because you love it here in Italy. Maybe in other countries, it's more rewarding because you get good pay and uh, you get some benefits. But here in Italy, it's a job that requests sacrifice. Requests like, sacrifice. And it doesn't give a lot of rewards from the economical point of view. Oh, really? Like, uh, How, you, you would think you are, you are a doctor of and you course. make a lot of yeah, money. Yes. But Mm -hmm. Like for me, uh, in this point of my career, I think uh, being a lawyer or being an engineer gives more mm -hmm. economical um, gratification. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Like, especially if you want to be uh, a good doctor. Like, yeah. if you decide that you want to put your patients first. Because okay. if not, uh, most people can't afford expensive doctors, so they go to the government, the public doctors who are not paid well. So at the end, it's uh, more of a charity, they say. Okay. So what may ask, um, did you even regret the decision you took? Like, did you regret? No, no. I'm happy to be a doctor. You're happy to be a doctor? Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, this is um, Dr. Maura that we have on share with Rofeka or Rofeka Life channel on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and anywhere, social media, we are full everywhere. And then she is educating us on the process she passed through before being a professional doctor, precisely in Italy. Like it wasn't easy, but although she has that mentality to become a doctor and then what she determined to do um, has also come to pass so before we come to a conclusion there are numerous of people who want to achieve or pursue their dream like what you've just achieved what word of encouragement do you have to tell the youth i think he wants to study uh, should go ahead because like i said earlier the study system in italy is quite straightforward and also it's very affordable um, thanks to uh, the fact that you don't have to pay tax, sometimes you even get free housing based on your income. And even if you don't end up finding the job for which you studied here in Italy, your certificate is valid in the whole of Europe and in also outside of Europe. So you can always uh, use it to get uh, the, the, the job you want elsewhere, even though I strongly believe you can find the job you want also in Italy, especially in the public, because um, in the public no one looks at your skin color. They just um, consider um, your degrees, they consider your knowledge. You, you sometimes have to write exams to get some jobs, but no one would say uh, you're a black, so you can't do this job. So don't be discouraged, just um, follow your, your art and um, put in the passion and the energy and the sacrifices. This is Dr. Maura. She has shared her intense story with this. Um, she pursued her education in Europe or Italy and now a professional doctor. So she is telling us that you can achieve anything provided you have self-control and determined that this is what you want in the nearest future. 
sure you can achieve it. I'll thank you again, Dr. Mara, for giving us this opportunity to share ideas, to enlighten our mind on education, most especially in Europe or in Italy. So this is Rofeka and share with Rofeka, with Rofeka Live, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and all the social media platform. I'll end you here, and then I'll say greetings to you all.